Welcome back, everyone, to TNO The Last of Europe. As you know by now, I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and right now we're going to continue after we've taken out Iberia, taken out Italy, and now they're led by, uh, who? Roberto Farinacci. Funny ISR man. Very cool. But we're doing War Plan C. The double War Plan C. The second War Plan C. Because there's always two of these, it seems like. So we do War Plan C, but War Plan C. Heinrich, uh, Himmley. So to betray the Reich during the 50s. Now, his rotting putzul of a state shall be burst under the treads of the house tanks. The crumbling Japanese Empire betrayed his promises and broke from the Axis. By now, they should be drowned by the might of the Kriegsmarine. The corrupt Judeo-capitalist Americans humor themselves by calling Germany the sick man of Europe. Now they will be reduced to scorch marks by our glorious Luftwaffe. The time has come to prepare ourselves. One last time, we shall enter the breach to transform the fate of the entire world, and the planet itself will bow to the maj majesty of our uh, race cars. To arms, men. Um, now, basically, we take out America first, or we take out Japan first. I kind of want to do Japan, but I kind of want to do, um, Burgundy. I think I always did Burgundy first, just because it just, ev everywhere it's nice and gray. Nice and dark gray, almost black. And I think border-wise, I think that'd be for the best. So, Paul Schwartz. Across many conquests for global domination, we've destroyed many errant subjects and traitors, former allies. This time is different, however, for this incoming fight we should be pitted against the result of the Reich's ultimate sin and failure. The black dogs of the double S believe themselves above us. They think they hold the secrets of the uh, race cars to themselves and plot our destruction in the shadows of their little fiefdom. We'll appease them no more. They must be crushed once and for all if the Reich is to know true peace and victory. From earliest days in the whole fun party, Himley and Herman were rivals. The big daddy always knew that his this little scheming little snake was not one to be trusted and his intuition was always correct. Then there was nothing he could do openly to fight back against the man whom Adolf held as close confidant, but now now there was no Adolf to save the men, man of the black sun. And we have a cup of white tea here, not green tea, not black tea, not even coffee, but white tea to keep us nice and pacified. Oh. Mad dogs. Herman sat at his desk in a private office with none other than Ferdinand Schoener sitting across from him. He felt defeated. The military said, near to total control over the entirety of the administrative apparatus, and there was very little he could do to stop their madness. Schoener, Goring noted, did not have the smug murk, smirk on his face wherever he knew that he had won up or outmaneuvered a rival. No words really needed to be spoken as Goring read the bill that Schoener had wordlessly dropped on his desk for the Fuhrer's rubber stamp of approval. It was no wonder that Schoener looked dejected. The leader of the military's faction, the clique that now dominated the government, had lost control over rapid war mongers. Goring skimmed over the bill in anticipation of a great struggle. Ah, blah 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 blah. More of the same nonsense. What stood out, Otto Ernst Reimer, and reward for devoted and distinguished service is also to be promoted to the rank of field marshal. Darn it. The most wild of the mad dogs was now top leader. No wonder Sean had looked defeated. Even he had lost control over the militarists. It seems as though war with the other superpowers of the world was now inevitable. Goring wordlessly pulled out his seal and stamped the bill, handing it back to Shona. The only words spoken between the two were finally said by Goring, although not shouted, as the words rang throughout the otherwise empty office. Is this what you wanted? Oh, do we have to do America first or something? We're going to do one operation at a time. Um, we understand, but... Are we preparing for anything else? Oh, maybe we got to do all this stuff first. Ah, that's going to make sense. So, I guess we got to finish off the remnants first, maybe, perhaps? In the meantime. Um, duck and cover? I've read this before, so if you do this again, please go ahead. There you go. Uh, let's take a look-see. Supplies, we're going to what we call god-awful around here. Central Africa. All these small, small little states. Where do you get that? Um, sure. Get more attack. Attack's nice, right? Duck and cover, and then safeguard the vote. For well, the recent efforts, the security of our bulk from nuclear annihilation has begun. If not ended, then at least mitigated. Our grand investment into both technology and concrete has ensured the German people rejoice for such a caring Fuhrer that has taken it upon him to spare them from the horrors of nuclear war. To give us more weekly war support, which actually we do want, but we'll do that later, actually. Defraschutz. 
For the first time in a long time, Herman Fuhrer, Herman Goring, was excited. After a torturously long week that had been dominated solely by political matters, related to the newest of the Reich's occupational regimes, Goring had managed to get one blessed night to himself. That span had never been in question. The Staatsoper, Germania, premiered a new run, the Webers, the Freischutz, and the Fuhrer was determined to attend the show come hell or high water. Why, even if Schoner were to barge in and announce that they had entered into war with America or Japan, Goring would not be dissuaded. He needed this as a man in the desert needs water. Bundled up in his multiple layers for a disguise and accompanied only by the most discreet and trusted of his personal god, the man who ruled over all of Europe and much of Asia and Africa did not look the pot. He was careful to avoid the gazes of the other operas goers, even as with all his efforts to disguise, he was still the most known man in the Reich, if not the world. After a few stressful encounters necessary to procure a seat, Goring was finally able to take place in the most prestigious of the viewing boxes, now that all that was left to relax and immerse himself in the show. And that was his plan at any rate, but it was not destined to be. The performance, as expected, of the renowned theater was as terrific as Goring could ever remember it being. Its quality was not what haunted his mind as the lines of O oh, Disa Zona ran through his head, no. It was the dawning realization on the part of the Fuhrer that he, for all his power and prestige, was in no better a situation than young Max. Those damned militaries, Shona, Raym, and the rest, they were the demonic Zamil, who had given him the magic bullets that had granted him such success. When the thought flashed into his mind, what would it come for the time for the seventh bullet to be fired? And what would it be its terrible price? He shuddered silently as unbottled images of hellish hellfire and day, death presented themselves to him in an inescapable montage of doom. The magic of the night was gone, and the fear collapsed into a deep sense of fear as he heard the chorus utter the line that had always been able to move him before, only now in quite a different sense. Es unsa und unsa der Sieg. Unsa der Sieg, unsa der Sieg. Oh boy. I do want to wait for this one, though. And we still haven't done this one, because I don't want to use any bills. I'm the man who refuses to use them for now. Because we still have got to talk about the power of the atom. The atomic bomb, the weapon which won the war. Proof of the superiority of the Aryan race. The gods had aided us in our quest for world domination decades prior through the gift of heavenly power. Yet, in the decades following the end of the Second World War, our proponents have regrettably achieved this godlike power. Thus, Fira Goring has decreed that research and development shall be commenced on the construction of an atomic bomb with far greater destructive power. Some have called for the hypothetical prototype of the Fira Bomb, content redacted for security purposes, of course. Infrastructure planning. Improving the Reich's infrastructure is vital to our ability to further innovate and conquer. From Frankfurt to East Prussia, our largely destroyed infrastructure network must be consolidated and outright rebuilt if we are to, if we are to successfully achieve our rightful place on the global stage. Thus, as best to begin planning for a new generation of roads, railways, and power lines so that the Jos Germanisches Reich may hopefully commence construction and a new improved power plant uh, can begin to build. Investments in the field of industry will allow us to design and build greater, more ambitious nuclear power plants. I love it. And I hope you love it too. Alright. Electronics research. When we began our domination of Europe all those years ago, the development of what we call electronics was still very young. There were radios and very primitive TVs, of course, but nothing like what we have access to now. Even with all of our own achievements, however, we often find ourselves lagging in this area when compared to the Japanese and Americans. So, so much of the research into electronics was put into the space race during the 50s that we have fallen behind in practical and everyday uses of these systems. The Führer hopes to remedy this as an, and as an opening salvo has ordered a significant budget increase for the GRWI, dedicated R&D of the new military and civilian applications of electronics. Jimmy shall remind the world that it was once a dominant technological powerhouse, and with a little greasing of the wheels, it will rega regain its rightful place. Only a billion, but one billion is better than no billion. West Africa should be good to go. Oh, we can only do one at a time. Okay, interesting. And time for lag. And a sip of tea. That's very plain white tea, huh? <sighs> Even though I try to pause the game, it still tries to call in everybody. That's why I don't like a divided... That's why I like having most of my puppets into one puppet. Because uh, it just causes a lot of lag. Look at that. So this episode, is, I, I wanted to go to war with Burgundy, but apparently it's going to be just Africa. For the most part, Africa, and probably a little bit of Burgundy at the end, so. Mine got. Mine. Mine got. So you might want to skip ahead five seconds or so. Five to ten seconds. To see if we actually end up killing up all the Africans. Atomic planning. The computer is a machine or device that empowers or performs processes, calculations, and operations based on instructions provided by software or hardware program. In the context of atomic development and planning, we've already seen preliminary studies that demonstrate the efficiency or 
efficacy of computer-based programs in testing and refining of projections. The GRWI has come to conclude that we must digitize our efforts if we were to achieve a relative success. Thus, we shall design and upgrade nuclear plants with a computer instead of relying on ballpark estimates, thereby improving the construction process. Make them grow like mushrooms, the concept of atomic planning is largely up to this point, regrettably found itself constrained by largely environmentalist and cons conservationist concerns, however. The fear has chosen to disregard its previous ethos of actually choosing to enjoy or protect the environment, which is used to waging effective warfare, instead with the fear's blessing. We shall improve the Reich's nuclear program through the construction of dozens of new plants all across Fatherland, irrespective of the population density or environmental beauty. This will speed up the, German, uh, the GGR's fledging program of nuclear development and advancement. It will also bring those who care about the so-called environment and health of the German nation out into the open, where we can trade their placards for long-deserved jail sentences. Nuclear reactors shall be built all around the country to power both the people and our new experiments. Level concern will rise. Not a concern of us. Or for us, though. As we have here. So we have a power focus. Military concern will rise. Add negative 2 to the decision power for the mil military sector. Show off to the world. We need 20 nuclear reactors. Um, we'll show off our nuclear program to the world to humble all other countries before the might of the Reich. Negotiate with the military's factions. Require 10 nuclear reactors. Military industrial participation will decrease by a small amount. Decrease loyalty and decrease influence. Close down coal plants. Require 10 nuclear reactors. Oh, get half a billion. Remove one thermoelectric plant. Oh, that's cool. We're decreasing public concern because we're establishing a new thermoelectric plants. And we're powering for, uh, the civilian sector and powering the military sector at the same time for more output, which is fantastic. And need to consume goods goes down, which is fantastic. So that's actually gone up. The deficit's gone worse. Inflation is going up slightly. And our debt to GDP ratio has gone up too. So, and, and overall, nothing's really changed. As we're still looting Italy. And I'm still trying to finish off uh, this part of Africa, West Africa, my god. What a flippin' mess. Oh! And there goes those guys. What a truly god awful mess this is. San Pedro and Abdejan. Oh, terrible. Uh, why are you going there? Why don't you do that? Akra. Make them grow like mushrooms, and we gotta talk about this here sun gun. We're gonna spend a lot of money in this episode, and that's fine with me. The Thames gun, and like Icarus before him, Deutschland shall ascend to the heavens. After a considerable time of continued research, attempts and failures, and multiple failures, and brushed off instabilities, we'll finally achieve the goals of Fuhrer Hermann Göring and propel the Gross Germanische Reich into an unstoppable military force, while well, also achieving superpower status once more in the eyes of the world. Indeed, the Thames gun for the Aryan race to reclaim its rival position as the highest race on the earth. Prepare the mine panel network, main panel network, Herr Doctor. Single network condition, you may fire when ready. Oh, yes, please. Advanced battleship C, carrier B, corvettes, cruiser hulls. There you go. Yeah. That'll be good. Nice. Oh, uh, we got first another U-boat out. Fantastic. Now we put most Italian Navy that, that was uh, remaining um, for the rest of our ships. So it's a little ahead of time. Semi-modern carrier? Sure, why not? Goodbye. I'm hoping with all the scientific research we're investing in. Uh, we can get up to the next level because modern research facilities are okay, but advanced research facilities gives you more GDP growth. But this one, gun, Goring, uh, gaze over the blueprint again and again. His eyes running along the white lines amid of the most outrageous projects the military had dreamed of behind him. Uh, Set so the top men of the GRWI, scientists, generals, bureaucrats, and Osenberg, all with a different reaction. Some seem excited, and some look terrified. Some seem to see opportunity in the funding, and Osenberg seemed on the verge of exploding. So, what are the capabilities of? Uh, Sonnen Gewehr asked the Fuhrer as his gaze shifted from specification to specification. Raymond's voice cut through the sound, speaking in a quietly excited manner. It's an unstoppable weapon, my Fuhrer. Impossible to counter, impossible to defeat, unable to destroy in cities and minutes. It's a perfect WMD. Raymond spouted his spiel as if he had rehearsed it a hundred times beforehand. Knowing Raymond, he probably had. Goring turned to Osenberg, whose face had grown red in time and taken for Raymond to speak. Mein Fuhrer, this is the most outrageous mistake the hares ever dreamed of. Osenberg spat the words out ferociously. As all eyes turned to him, it's overcomplicated, it's unwieldy, it won't work, it'll take billions to create. Goring cut him off. How much will this cost, anyhow? He turned back to Raymer. 
Between 100 and 150 million, billion Reichs, Marks Mein Fuhrer, Goring's eyes widened, he cracked a smile before catching himself, bringing his face to neutral. Uh, here was a fun opportunity he'd been waiting for. Hey, I'll ramble you my full permission to go ahead. The screech of a chair moving caught everyone's attention, just in time to watch Osenberg storm out of the meeting and slam the door behind him. Okay. So we're out of focuses until we do this one, which I want to save for later. We're not doing this one, the March to MEFO, like I said before. I'm saving this one to safeguard them because when we do this one down here, then, um, when you get down here, you're going to lose 5% weekly war support, which is an ungod awful mess. So we got a little bit of public concern we got to put down. And as we'll research and do what we need to. Oh, avoid public guy in Ukraine. By building reactors in Ukraine, we can cut the cost of those reactors in half without the public becoming scared. Okay. Pump up more reactors. Uh, let's do this first. Uh, we won't let time go on, too, so. Uh, a thousand. Honestly? Oh, that's 1975. Oh, we just got here. Thermoelectric plants. Nuclear construction. Barracks, prisons, admin offices. Uh, more output. We could use that immediately. Yay, fantastic. Pump up more reactors. Spend half a billion. Okay, why not? Establish new thermoelectric plants. Spend 0.2 billion. Well, we can shut down coal plants for half a billion. For half a billion, we get we get half a billion here. This will cost us 0.2 billion. We save money overall. Fully switch nuclear. Replace digital architecture with nuclear powered nation. Way more political power, factory output, annual GDP growth factor, better need to consumer goods, nuclear reactor, and enrichment plant speed. Oh my god, yes, that is so good to do. Remove power focus, now we're good. I do want to close down coal plants, so we're going to try to maximize as many nuclear reactors as possible. That'd be fantastic. Um, what do we have here? Advanced Corvette holes, that's cool. Goodbye. Advanced cruisers, battleships. Carriers. We still need carriers and battleships, but still. That'd be fantastic. Decrease public concern, decrease a little bit of corruption. Nothing a little bit of political power can't do or solve, you know? And how are we doing? We're finally slowly getting down here. Which would be great. Excuse me, guys. They're Africans. They don't need very much. So I think, for the most part, once this peace conference is over, there we go. Oh, uh, wait, what happened? Ooh. Are you all at least with... You're not inner borders, what the heck? I don't understand. Rice colony invests Africa, but you can get the Cameroonian African state. What the barnacles? Um. Oh, we're at war with France, huh? Well, I think it, we're at impasse here, so right now what we're going to do, I'm just going to straight up annex free France, wherever the heck they are. And we'll make sure that uh, all these African states are destroyed, eaten up, as we're going to go do a lot of this stuff over here too. But we'll build more nuclear reactors up. The new missile designs are finished. Goring tapped twice against a thick glass pane. The trail of smoke coming from a cigar bouncing up and off as he turned his head to look at the two men. Both wearing sharp business suits, been both serving the Reich in their own specific ways. Taking the cigar out of his mouth, he displayed the hand that took it towards the launch facility currently in the process of launching a missile. The man to the left, shorter, brown-haired, and blue-eyed, spoke up, knowing that Goring wanted him too. You were asking about the chances of the missile striking the marked Soviet bunker, mind Fuhrer. The chances are higher than 80%. He spoke, letting an anxious but confident smile take him. Goring, however, seemed uninterested, rolling his eyes as he looked back to the facility and joined the lights. Show. The Reich only accepted 100%, but fine, I'll take it. The scientist felt his heart drop a little. Still, Goring took a slight pause, closing his eyes and taking another puff of his cigar. The crisp stinging his lungs slight, lightly and let out an exhale as he looked back to, at the other man who had yet to speak up. Rupert, was it? Of similar height to the scientist next to him? They looked more openly assured. Yes, my fear, all members of the Ionite Spect accepted the purchase of these missiles and Goring's eye narrowed. Of course, I've also made sure they'll receive 120% of what they ordered and will be under law of the Ionite Spect, forced to pay for those as well. A graceful smile came over Goring's lips and he felt positively sly. I'm satisfied then. They may complain all they want about us overcharging them, he said, waving a cigar around lightly, letting the smoke strike the two men in front of him. But in the end, it will all be for their security, isn't that right, gentlemen? Silently, the men nodded. I sure they're well worth the buck for their bang. Uh, this increase the liquid reserves by almost a billion. Ah, Maratius gets a missile silo. Fantastic. Nothing to worry about. From redacted Reichskommissariat Ukraine to Germania, Germany. At 2300 hours, a new commando unit of Ukrainian partisans managed to infiltrate the nuclear power plant. It is unknown what the overall strategic goals of the mission was in regards to the plans of the partisans. It's been suggested that it was some variant of a suicide mission where a commando unit was able to disable 
or damage the safety system in order to cause a chain reaction within the power plant. This would cause a type of reaction that would expel an enormous amounts of radioactive energy into the atmosphere, leaving the surrounding area virtually uninhabitable. In the worst case scenario, these irradiated particles would reach Germania in less than three months. The more likely the scenario is that the commando units were simply trying to disable the power plant as a whole, to cripple the energy supply of the Reichskommissariat. Whatever the case, the workers of the power plant managed to activate the safety systems before a critical error could occur. The partisan group did not manage to defeat the reinforcements to the plant security, however, they could not be captured for interrogation. The current casualty count is 6 partisan commandos, 3 security units, and 14 workers. No men from the reinforcements were hurt in the fighting. Workers of the power plant have been reported this, that the safety systems did not perform to their recommended timescale and were significantly behind the expected time schedule. Workers have previously complained of the outdated equipment to the superiors, however, nothing was done. One junior worker even reported witnessing bits of graphene across the outside after the incident, referring to the graphene rods to control the reaction of energy. A thorough investigation was conducted, but no fragments of the rods were located. The junior worker has been taken to the infirmary to be psychologically evaluated. Hal Goring. How close were we to a nuclear apocalypse? Public concern will rise. Military concern will rise. Every 33% of the GRWI corruption will make the militarists lose more power, but increase the chance military concern will rise. Decrease the power of the militarists by a small amount. Ein Schwarzer tag. The bunker was filled to the brim. The fans recirculating already stale air without about the room. Despite the stuffy atmosphere, the fierce enthusiasm was infectious, and not a man could deny the buzz of anticipation. To his left sat Ranha Galen, bizarrely still wearing mirrored sunglasses despite the fact they are 100 feet underground. To his left was Footland and Shona, surrounded by his coterie of sycophantic young officers with chests of shining medals. Goring's foe was tapping at the floor at a frantic pace. Galen had instructed the Fuhrer's staff to attempt to keep him under control, but it seemed that they had been unable to keep him from maintaining a supply of amphetamines. He inwardly cursed and hoped Shona at least would be able to keep the military situation out of his twitching hands. Bloody foot of him. Was perhaps one of the only men capable of keeping the invasion failing, falling to disaster. Shona was doing his best to walk the fear through the invasion plan, but Goring was more concerned with premature celebration than planning. I want him alive, you know. I want to see the look on the bastard's face when I see his domain inflamed before the bullet hits his skull. Shona scowled, of course, but first false thoughts must be completed. It would draw your attention to Sector 6. You know, I haven't seen him since the West Russian War. I never liked him before then, even. Always knew he was scum. If only Hitler was here to see this god, it would be glorious. Galen did his best not to bury his head in his hands. Tell him to begin operations. 30 seconds to midnight. So I just went ahead and just used focus autocomplete. Um, so Africa took forever. Also, uh, I did annex this part because there's a bug currently in the game where the Cameroonian African state keeps popping up for no reason. Especially when they get taken up by Rex Colony of West Africa. As well as Yorba Land, which really sucks. And then Mozambique was part of the OFN, and I didn't want to go to war with the OFN early, so I just directly annexed them using console commands from there. So that took freaking forever. Which sucked. But, oh well. Um, so let's continue, or start, preparing the blow. While military might will of course be the cornerstone of this defeat of the traitor state, Spy Master Galen makes a good point when he argues that Burgundy will require more unique handling. Given its nature as well as all-knowing and completely secret police state with an intelligence capability amongst the world's best, it certainly could be worth it to attempt to break their greatest strength. Naturally, this cannot be done with bullets or bombs, we must fight fire with fire. The Abwehr has begun mobilizing for action on an unprecedented scale in the Reich's history uh, to do their part against one of our greatest threats. The, a swift end to madness, given Burgundy's nuclear capability that we are, admittedly, largely in the dark about. The High Command is in universal agreement that a quick, decisive blow must be conducted to knock out the Ordenstadt before it has a chance to use its nuclear capabilities. We'll be focusing on preparing multiple avenues of attack that will hopefully catch the SS off guard and overwhelmed regardless of their preparation. Our various neighboring military Vavaltungs will have major parts to play to be used as a launching grounds in multiple lines of advance. By the time the Himmler even knows what's going on, we will be in Noah Paris. No time to waste with the games of subterfuge and espionage. We must eliminate the Burgundian threat as swiftly as possible, of course. And we're still putting up more stuff here, and uh, I hate that they just pop out for no reason. I hate that it's glitched. Ugh, terrible, I know. Ready the hair. We'll receive a report on the status of the hair. Two decades ago, our armies marched and drove across Eurasia, conquering all in their path. There was a feat of arms unparalleled in history, and some said it could never be matched again. Well, we have proven that ones, the ones who said that wrong, haven't we? In only a few short years, we have matched and then exceeded the success of our first conquest, bringing all but the three greatest powers in their spheres under our control. Our men, grizzled veterans of dozens of campaigns now, could give Caesar's legions a run for their money, in preparation for fall of Schwarz. Fear Goring has written to Field Marshal Shona, asking for a comprehensive analysis of the harem. It will no doubt show the peerless heights to which they have risen. Rudith Kriegsmarine. It is hard to imagine now, but it was only a few decades ago when our navy was considered second rate at best and a joke at worst. We lost multiple ships in the invasion of Norway alone, and even lost our advanced battleship Bismarck to the American dogs. Things have changed greatly since those days, however, and while the Kriegsmarine may not have been a top priority of the Reich, our fleet has served us admirably these past years in the conquest of the British Isles of Scandinavia, Italy, Iberia, and Turkey, and yes, our sailors have likely gained more combat experience in the past five years than in the entire history of the Kriegsmarine. A report on the status of the fleet is being finalized even now, and we'll be on the Führer's desk for a review within days. Ready to Luftwaffe. 
Ah, the Lufafa, the apple of him and Goring's eye, the number of those who can personally attest to the fact that it had begun to dwindle in recent years, but all school children of the Riker taught that the Fear Goring was once a top fighter ace in the First World War. Was well, not taken to the sky prepared for a scrap in quite some time. The former ace and head of the air fleet that led the Riker to victory in the skies will always treasure the men who slip the moorings of gravity and fly like mythical dragons, breathing fire and death to the enemies of the Vatalem. Goring eagerly waits a sit rep on the Lufafa's battle readiness. Beautiful. And see, it just popped out again, which is god awful and terrible. Because it's forcing us uh, to um, fight them too, so. But begun his spy levels all seeing, our spy levels extensive. But Gundy's alertness to operations is currently unaware, our covert level is certainly silent. We're currently in a stalemate in the Silent War. We'll be able to win the Silent War if we're able to maintain a higher spy level than Burgundy. We must be careful to not raise Burgundy's suspicions too high, or they may preemptively strike us. Our covert level determines our operative's ability to operate in secret and keep it. Keeping it high will unlock more options for its agents. Probe the defenses. Hey, right, we'll see. Hopefully we can do better. A small little probing war. Oops. Nice, we're all done there. Um, it's quite ahead of time if we want to do it like this. Research speed, school policy, prisons, division recovery rate, not bad. That's one more extraction. Because we're actually getting fuel, look at that! Every part of me says go ahead. Uh, Peter stared incredulously. They turned around. For the past six days, he had enjoyed us had been stuck in the stinking muddy hole. The only new entrant had been a grenade, frantically hurled back by his comrade in the eleventh hour. The noise had been unrelenting, and they had been long since run out of ammo with, with which to return fire. The previous minute they had been confused. The absence of noise seemed deafening. Peter had been so desperate that he all volunteered to peek out, resigned to his fate. The Burgundian troops that had seemed so mean, menacing, with the unrelenting firing and constant artillery cover were moving backwards. Well, they did some boom while gun heavy guns were still there. The constant typewriter drill sound of small arms had disappeared. All that remained was a blackened no man's land of mud and scorched earth. Behind the mouths, the reports were confirmed, and a sigh of relief was breathed throughout Germany. The stiffy was a crack in the armor they needed, proof that Burgundy wasn't the indestructible mono that they had feared, and on top of that all. Um, on the top front line, moved back, really to live another day. Looks like Himmler's dogs aren't so tough after all, which is good. Uh, there we go. Nice. Swift into the madness. No time to waste with games of subterfuge and espionage. We must eliminate them as fast as possible. An iron curtain. A large border with the Odin shot works as an advantage to us, allowing us to strike from multiple positions at once and overwhelm the cracked troops with their superior numbers. However, this fact also works against us in one way. Should the Burgundians choose to preemptively attack us before we are fully prepared, our lands could be broken. Oh, that's going to keep doing that for now, too. Oh, a little bit of lag. Why is it lagging so hard? It's just this focus stream, man. To remedy this, Sphere Goring has demanded the Reich's engineers to submit plans for possible defensive lines to prevent this possibility. We could fortify the entire snaking border across our core territory and that of the military of our but the cost of the project will increase in proportion to the coverage still in the long run. We will be able to plunder the entire world and what will a few million marks matter. Establish a wall of unbreakable iron between ourselves and the Burgundian menace. The cost of this defensive project will depend upon how extensive we wish the fortress line to be. Ready to the people. With the continued state of war over the past several years, there are some within the Fuhrer's circle. We fear that the German people may be growing exhausted of the constant war, the possibility of never seeing their sons, fathers, and husbands and the possibility that they may be bombed or even attacked by nuclear weapons should the Reich run into something with as big a bite as they have, the Fuhrer. And more importantly, Field Marshal Schoner and General Reimer will have done have none of this, however. And a new propaganda campaign meant to rid of the Volk for war against the Assos traitors has been established. They'll all learn just what the madman Himmler would do to them should he be allowed to succeed or even survive. They must be reminded that this is no longer the Heinrich Himmler of Hitler's heyday, who stood beside the Fuhrer, but a snake in the grass was always waiting for his death of the supposed friend to make his moves. We fight devils. The men of the SS, now Himmler's personal army, are no mere normal soldiers. They are, in truth, not even the zealous enforcers of national socialism we once knew them as. No, they become a legion of demons, men willing to commit acts so despicable that they define the bounds of any even normal wartime normality. They'll give us no quarter, we must be prepared to respond in kind. They are far too gone by this point, there is no point in attempting to save this diseased wreck of an organization. They decided that they would follow their Lucifer out of heaven and down to hell. They do not see us as true Germans, their madness has utterly corrupted them. Well, if our men are called on to fight on the devil's own soldiers, they will, uh, do so as quickly as they would any other. But Kumpen must prepare to defend ourselves against a Burgundian menace, ready to hair. 
Mind Fear of the Hare is in the best shape it has ever been in. It is overall the best trained and most well-motivated army by far in the entire world, although a harder and better force, our army is, to put it plainly, stretched thin. Garrisons from the steppes to our Middle Eastern holdings have, for the most part, the bare minimum of men to occupy our lands. Our manpower reserves are beginning to run low, a war of attrition fought by our forces would at this point be incredibly costly and likely not sustainable. Alternate means of raising up men should be considered if we were to continue to expand the Reich, drawing natives from our Mittler uh, to throw into the world's battlefields or garrisoning them in regions with heavy partisan activity would be prudent. Our army is the best, but do we have enough men for future campaigns? And we'll follow the Fuhrer. And in many aspects of the conquest, Fuhrer Goring has led us in his ascension. He has never led us into failure. He was always a devoted servant of the Reich, and now he serves the people through his unmatched leadership. Soldiers all trust him with their lives and nation with his victory, in the recent parade throughout Germania. The Fuhrer has led the procession of some 6,000 soldiers, resplendent in his full military attire, displaying dozens of medals and honors that he has earned through devotion to the Reich. At the end of the ceremonial march, the Fuhrer stood in full view of the assembled soldiers and was hailed with a thunderous adulation that only soldiers can give. Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil, Heil Goring, Heil der Fuhrer. We push your troops to the limits and force march entire armies if we have to for victory. Into hell itself. What we'll be marching into is no ordinary nation, filled with enemies, sure, but people, shops, and all the things like a nation. What we're about to enter into can only be matched in its monstrosity by the Christian depiction of hell. It's a place of pain and eternal torment. Where the damned wish for death but always find it upon just out of reach until their assets masters find their usefulness is at an end or they may expire from the stress. Even the most hardened of men still has conscious that can keep him awake in the dead of night, but these SS dogs have abandoned even that much of their humanity, and do not deserve the titles Aryan, German, or even human. They are the detritus of this world and shall be treated accordingly. The Kriegsmarine. My inferior naval rebuilding and retooling is continuing as planned. Progress is not spectacular, but a navy is more or less recovered from the many defections and losses of the Civil War, although certainly formidable, and more than a match for any of our immediate neighbors. The American and Japanese navies could prove to be troublesome still. Our submarine forces are not to be underestimated. We're more than capable of projecting power onto the world's oceans from below. Our major bases at Kiel, Plymouth, and Gibraltar continue to build, harbor, and train our naval forces and Gross Admiral Karl uh, Jesko von Puttkammer. So perhaps not the best, but formidable all the same. Still growing. Yearly deficit. Not good. Oh well. Pump up more reactors, yes. Put them in, the U put them in Ukraine, yes. Are we still building more? We need to build more nuclear reactors. More. Strange bedfellows. Uh, dire times, I say, can make strange bedfellows of us all, and further, the enemy of my enemy is still my friend. We played our own substantial part in destroying the vestiges of resistance within France, when we held total control of the region, but now that we face the only foe to deal more damage to their freedom than we have, perhaps they would be willing to overlook our past actions in favor of a temporary alliance? It would be one of the strangest occurrences in a century full of them, but such as our circumstances, that is at uh, least worth looking into. We cannot guarantee success, but still, just to be safe, we all gave them and assess the state of the resistance movements within the Oldenstadt. New decision to contact various resistance groups that still may be operating within Burgundy. Meeting, meetings in the night. Following assessments, we have had carried on the state French or the French and Belgian resistances. Fear Goring has given Hagelin permission to conduct reach out missions to, un, to known resistance contacts that have survived until now. We understand that these groups likely have been whittled down by years of persecution and lack of morale, but it could also be true that the Burgundians have driven an increased amount of French and Belgian men and women to fight for their survival underground. On another note, Herr Galen has also put forward the prospect of entering into communication with members of the foreign SS divisions that make up the core of Burgundy's forces. At the same time, he has cautioned that this presents significant danger, and that exposing herself this early on could disrupt her entire campaign before it even begins, needless to say. The Fuhrer will be carefully considering all options. We shall meet our resistance contacts in the dead of night. No one must see. We read the Luftwaffe as well. Ah. <sighs> Uh, mind Fuhrer, you'll be pleased to learn that the Luftwaffe is in fantastic fighting form. Although there are a few minor local jet plane shortages across our holdings, all in all we have one of, if not the largest, air forces in the world. Our technology is top tier, which is reflected in the quality of our planes. Our ballistic missile stockpiles have also massed hot nicely. We have over a thousand warheads currently pointed at the rogue SS state to our west. All in all, when concentrated, the Luftwaffe is second to none in the skies. Your, your faithful servant, Johannes Steinhoff, General Der Flieger. Der Flieger. Fuhrer Goring was pleased to hear that. Prepare for sabotage. Making new friends is all well and good, but it'll only get us so far. Battles and wars are not one with promises of meeting, but with the destruction and sabotage of the enemy. While some field agents are running around Paris looking for Pierre the Freedom Fighter, others will be heading to more solid targets. Railroad junctions, air control towers, supply depots, even barracks will be targeted for covert destruction. Oh, to be fly on the wall when Himmler, that obsessively intricate freak, discovers all his plans have gone arise as an entire country explodes around him, the Fuhrer. Would well, you love to see such a sight in person at least once, perhaps once Himmler lies ready for execution, Goring will be able to have his fun. We must prepare to sabotage Burgundy to take out the Black Sun. Learn their secrets. So far, our operatives have been 
forced to warily skirt around any signs of Burgundian operations, lest they be detected and killed, or worse. However, if we were able to capture or acquire Burgundian code books and crack them, then we'd be able to see all their moves ahead of time and could plan on them more efficiently around them to the point where we could hardly have to worry about detection, needless to say. Securing Burgundian code books is no easy task, and should we be discovered, the consequences could be severe indeed. Galen will, of course, defer to fear of goring on the matter, but he seems to believe the valuable insight we stand to gain may be worth the tremendous risk. On the state of the Burgundian resistance movements, Recordings regarding possible dissident elements within the Burgundian Odenstadt, obviously the SS, was never going to share their own weaknesses, given that they seem to have been planning for years now. The Odenstadt is considered an impenetrable secret state for a reason, even at the height of our power. We're never able to maintain the level of communications blackout that they have achieved. To me, this does not bode well for finding any active resistance cells, of course. Hard to find does not mean non-existent, and the Avar will search every nook and cranny in order to further the goals of the Reich. We have two elites currently on French and Belgian contacts, but we need a further time to verify that authenticity, lest we fall into Burgundian counterintelligence. As for potential informants within the regime, we do know of at least the names of some, but the list is from before the Burger Krieg, and given the high rate of turnover among the Burgundian officials, coupled with the possible changes in willingness to cooperate, we cannot rely heavily on this information. We have agents in the field conducting check-ins on the names to confirm nor or not the status of these potential assets in this report. Only a redacted has been located and has been confirmed as a deceased since 1965 during one of the apparently infamous purges carried out on the Reichsführer SS Himmler's direct orders. Our best guess is that redacted and redacted have also been terminated in the meanwhile, but this cannot be confirmed at this moment. As always, my fear, we will update it when any new information has been discovered. General, Ma General Major Reinhard Galen Abwehr. Well, at least it's something. Try to contact the Belgians on that oper operational capability of the Belgian partisan movement. And try to contact the French. We will try. Not bad, not great. It's slowly going up now. Oh. The number of informants within the upper ranks of the SS is estimated to be no more than five. Confirmation of this figure is impossible due to the constant scrutiny the inner SS are subject to, greater than that of even the civilian populace and the lower SS ranks. Report follows. Attempt was made by Redactor to strike up conversation with Obo Obo Gruppenfuhrer Redactor. Start during off hours with the aid of a flask of smuggled brandy. Obo Gruppenfuhrer Redactor is known to have relatives and a former mistress in Germany and was thought to have a possible ally. The attempt went well until Redactor voices concern for his own family, at which point Obo Gruppenfuhrer Redactor immediately exited the conversation. A Redactor made his report the same night. Since no further communication has been received, Redactor has been presumed dead. As his internal security procedures have since increased dramatically, another informants have also ceased contact, either laying low or already caught. Conclusion is that any further attempts to acquire to soil SS officers would do more harm than good. Is there anywhere Burgundy is weak? On the operational capability of the Belgian partisan movement. Um, informant account of informal Belgium is estimated in the single digits due to the constant Burgundian purges process and difficulty maintaining communications due to radio jamming and signal tracing, putting the remaining agents at great risk. Intelligence reports are, therefore, widely and irregularly distributed, and information may be at best outdated and at worst active disinformation. Report follows. Informants were alerted of the task of contacting the Belgian resistance by the usual means, a high-power narrow-band radio station broadcasting numeric code during scheduled hours. Confirmation of message reception is impossible due to aforementioned Burgundian radio jamming. Contact was made by means transmitted within the initial radio message. A Dutch fisherman by the name of Redacted, Von Redacted, informant Redacted, were successfully made contact with the fisherman, with the collected findings of those of his network he knew yet lived, though his request for extra exfiltration was denied. Analysis of the information concludes that there is no longer any Belgian resistance worthy of the name. Burgundian Purges successfully eliminated dissident movements from within the Avafen SS years ago, and since then has maintained an extensive suppression campaign. Leon de Grel, formerly the most outspoken figure of Belgian nationalism, has been missing for years, presumably dead by both Burgundian authorities and Belgian public. All evidence indicates that the Belgian resistance is dead and gone. That rules out one option. Ooh, and now we're at low. That's not good. Deploy the Albert. Burgundy is considered an impenetrable fortress state in no small part due to the frightening prowess of their agents, and many of whom were trained by one of the Reich's top wartime operatives, Otto Skorzeny. We won't be able to do real damage until we put a dent into the army of spies that will be waiting for us in North Paris. Galen has assembled his best men to undergo these high-risk, high-reward missions that will, with any luck, put us one step closer to end seek against these black dogs. We must deploy the Abwehr to Burgundy in order to get an upper hand over them, should you choose to accept it. Um, ah, but advanced nuclear technology. That is what we like to see. So all this is done. That's just fantastic. Very good, 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 good. Examine the foreign SS for cracks. Try to contact this little Burgundians. Into the belly of the beast. I want to do that one next.
master of spies. The so-called silent war begins to take shape between us and our foes in the SS, which you consider how we can more tactically deploy our agents of the field. Losing too many will mean then an effective concession to Burgundy, and a loss in this game of chess, but also a loss of cool tension somewhat in our group. On the other hand, we begin to deploy more agents, but this may end up doing a little more than causing more of an unwanted commotion that'll cause the Burgundians to catch on to our plans. Either way, Galen will honor the wishes of the Fuhrer. If we get all the upper hand of this, we must be able to master spies. Into the belly of the beast. Pursuant to Fuhrer Director 237, uh, the Abwehr will begin conducting uh, covert operations against the so-called foreign SS divisions of the former Odenshaw Burgund. Target groups include SS Division Charlemagne, Walloon, and Langemark. These missions are to be conducted in service to Fall Schwarz, currently underway and are meant to sow division in the ranks of anticipated enemy combatants once combat operations begin. Propaganda is to be seeded amongst the uh, rank and file of these units to drop their operational capabilities at below efficient levels. This directive is as only as classified to be distributed to operational chiefs. The closure of these operations is punishable by death in accordance with Fear Directive 238 on infractions of secrecy regarding Paul Schwartz's covert operations. Commence operations. Out by the skin of the teeth, dissolved on stomach acids. Oh god. Blow for blow, we have begun to place our operatives in key positions to killing off, begin killing off Burgundy's spies one by one. Such operations will no doubt be quite dangerous, as these spies are well trained and always on the guard, but we, all we need is one movement, moment where they relax. Um, and in a second where they'll stop their panoptic watch in that moment, we will strike without hesitation because the longer we wait, the greater the chance of our discovery and determination. We're on the cusp of breaking the near mythic information supremacy of Burgundy, now's the time to press home on all fronts. Resolved on stomach's acids. Our good inform the fear that the recent operations have caused dissent and confusion within the ranks of the foreign SS divisions within the Oldenstadt Burgund were forced to be called off this morning. After two unsuccessful infiltration attempts resulting in no detection and extraction, a third attempt was made that was detected and subsequently emergency aborted. The SD did not capture the deployed agent, when Hauptmann Friedrich Sturm were committed in an undisclosed area of the audience force to avoid capture and interrogation. I understand this is regrettable and will strive to ensure that such a failure does not occur in the future. Al Goring. Darn it, Galen, can you bring me no good news? Oh. Well, we don't want them to nuke us. Contact us, low Burgundians. I'm not sure that would actually prove useful at all, so I don't think I'll honestly do that one. Blind their eyes. As the date for open combat operations against Burgundy draws ever closer, Galen has drawn up proposals to hit Burgundy's intelligence gathering stations that will be able to warn them of troop deployments and buildups ahead of the invasion. Crippling their ability to watch our movements will go a long way in giving us the intel, or initial and decisive edge in the fast approaching battle. This is not an easy mission, although the same could be said for all field operations in that darn nation, but hopefully it will be the last before we can dispense with the shadow plots and do whatever we can do best. Destroy our enemies. To the agents about to embark upon the most critical of missions, the fear only has one thing to say. Seek Kyle. We must blind the Burgundians, and I'll not can allow them to see what we're doing. Absolutely. Oh, this one's taking a long time to do. Map out the silos. Currently the greatest obstacle to detecting and intercepting, never mind encountering any of the Burgundies' nukes, is the fact that we simply do not know where any of them are. That will need to be rectified and quickly at that. Or we could wind up all engulfed in nuclear hellfire when Raymer gives an order to march in guns blazing. The Odenstadt has used its hidden nukes as a deterring trump car for years now. We needed to deprive them of this asset before we had a war. The Luftwaffe has made several of its most high-tech spy planes available for the task of finding and mapping out where these missile silos have been stationed. Once we know they are, we can tell our bombers where to target and program our defenses to intercept them in the regrettable event of nuclear launch. Our contacts will supply our bombers locations of the Burgundian nuclear silos. Strategic bombing capability will be increased by 10%. Should you choose to accept it, to Galen sat at his desk observing the map of Burgundy. That was the best one they had. Um, it was three years out of date. Any number of these settlements could now be military encampments or research facilities are just gone. He had promised a few results, though, and he would get results. Even now, his agents were attempting to infiltrate Burgundy from all angles. Divers disembarking from submarines, parachutists performing halo jumps, mountaineers attempting, attempting the few perilous climb down the Alps in secrecy. He estimated at least two-thirds of them would be dead by tomorrow. Leadership was, knowing, was about knowing how to make the correct sacrifices, though. He sacrificed a thousand lives for a chance of bringing down Burgundy for every one spared. Uh, brought a piece of information that might save countless lives. The object could crack this country. Even he had a pile of corpses to climb over the border fence himself. Send in the next wave. Information overload. In the world of air combat, a topic in which a Fuhrer has kept himself remarkably well informed upon even as the most inter interests slip away, there is the concept of chaff. Chaff is a type of divisionary tactic wherein a cloud of material is released to confuse radar and other detection systems to overload them with false positives. In the Fuhrer's opinion, the method by Master Galen has proposed to overwork the Oldenstadt's intelligence services seems quite similar to this modern tool of the skies. But keeping their agents too busy through fake operations and the like, our real endeavors will no doubt see far greater success in the field. 
Just as our jets throw up chaff to avoid missiles, we will throw so much information out into the wind that the Burgundians will have no way to know what our true intentions are. Absolute nuclear coverage. As the first nation with nuclear power we have come up against in our conquest, we must be prepared to face some uncomfortable realities. Nuclear launches may be unavoidable, and we may not be able to intercept all the targets in our way. Does that mean we're to simply give up and let the traitors uh, breathe easy, however? Of course not. Even if you nukes make it past our guard, we can still carry on, and we must make sure that the Burgundians understand that if they hit us with one nuke, we'll hit them with five to match. The fear has ordered an emergency massive silo build up along the border that will allow us, should it come to it, to cover every inch of Burgundy and nuclear radiation within an hour. They believe that alone they they hold the power of the atom as their trump card. They have been greatly mistaken. We must be prepared to blanket all of Burgundy with nuclear fire. Our nuclear delivery system will be expanded to better target Burgundy. Ooh. Deploy more spies. That was medium, that's not good. More nuclear reactors. It is never enough. Four carriers, six carriers, four carriers. Well, congrats. How many nuclear reactors do we have? 50 for that one. We need 20 for that one. Prepare for sabotage. Sabotage Burgundy. A much proposal. Hmm. It is their turn to, to, to fear the dark. It is finished. Silent war. Greatest struggle of spies and webs of woven potlucks has come to an end. It was hard fought as a war as any conquest we have undertaken to date. And the true battle against Burgundy has not even arrived. We suffered casualties, yes, and faced setbacks against a juggernaut, their juggernaut, of an intelligence state. We press ever onward with the conviction of the true national socialism and with the Aryan blood pumping through our veins. The Burgundians know that we can, if not destroy them on an informational plane, at least stand it as a worthy foe. Hopefully the intelligence we have so painstakingly gathered will serve us well in the coming weeks of war. I hope so. Rally the Rocks Commissariats. When we go to battle against the Black Sun, uh, or the Black State of Burgundy, we will not be doing so alone. We will have the assistance of many, many military of the Baltungs to supplement our forces and draw the SSS's attention away from main advances. Of course, this burden will mostly fall to those MWs that border Burgundy. Uh, this would include M uh, military of the Baltung Britannian, Occitanian, and Italian puppet. Each will be able to fulfill specific aspects and tasks that should help streamline our invasion. The Führer will also be sending communiques to the generals who have been placed in charge of these regimes soon. Cracking the Enigma. With the beginning of administration in chaos, the Alvier decided now is the time to crack the secret codes in the SS for use of all vital communications. Normally we just outright shoot down this kind of plan, it's not just reckless, it borders on madness, however. The Alvier is confident they can get the job done. And with the SS in chaos at home, they argue that there's no better time than now to launch an undercover operation to steal codebooks. They may very well be right, there may maybe not be another window of opportunity like this, still is it worth the risks? If they think they can do it, they must have faith in their men, then. Oh, God. Alert the ISR. Oh, the crack, oh, crack code has failed. It all seemed to be going as planned. Our obvious agents infiltrated one of the SS commands posts in Paris as planned. Our men walked right through the security checkpoints with no issues. Our men made it inside. Again, no problems. The issue is that they never came out. About a day after our men were last seen, nearly all of our safe houses in Burgundy were raided. Most of our agents were compromised in the crackdown. It's safe to say that the operation went horribly wrong. Our men probably got captured and then likely were horribly tortured to death, but not before they gave up sensitive information, if the raids are anything to go by. We know the risks, and we now have to deal with them, the consequences. The SS likely know that it was without a doubt us who had been sabotaging their back lines. Tensions are without a doubt going to rise. It remains to be seen if they ever will boil over or not. We got too ambitious for our own good. The Italian Social Republic, or the ISR, as much of the old Italian Empire's military stone tack, they have a bit bad about our invasion. They border the Burgundians via the Alps, and for any other military, we would hesitate to even attempt such an assault. The Italians, however, are more so than uh, any other nation, European nation. They have experienced mountainous warfare dating back to the unification. 
Uh, Farnacci. As a willing puppet, and we'll have no doubt he will jump at the chance to please us. The ISR is most powerful of our new dominions, and we can leverage his power in the fight against the SS. Alert, uh, military of Avaltung Britannien. Ah, oh, this nation. A side of two triumphs and an incredibly important strategic location for our operations going forward. While most of the generals recognize it as an important staging ground for our eventual invasion uh, of North America, some have astutely pointed out that we could also make it useful for assault on the Odenstadt. Indeed, the short crossing across the channel means we could quickly have marines on the beaches of Normandy and Calais, and swarming down the, into the capital region while Burgundy's forces are concentrated on the land borders. According to we'll have a word about, with London about preparing adequate transport for such an operation. The military of Avaltung Britannia will serve as an excellent staging ground for a naval invasion in northern Burgundy, a reconnaissance of the Black State. He should have been able, should have been as terrified as he was. Matthias had flown so many sorties and spy planes, and even more on the combat missions during the First West Russian War. This is just another uh, routine surveillance mission. It was so close to the German border as well, it wasn't supposed to be terrifying, but he couldn't shake the fear of being tasked with taking photos of Burgundy's nuclear silos. He dreaded hearing the locked on sounds. He dreaded having to bail. Most of all, Matthias dreaded the inevitable endless interrogation should he ever be get captured, luckily. The images were finally coming in. He could see the Burgundy nuclear silos in there, it was far, far more than he could have expected. Sure, it was a bluff. There was no conceivable way. This is Matthias' command. You have got to see this. Significant. Um. That's not good. God. Uh. Huh. Marines in Normandy. Uh, we formulated an acceptable plan of amphibious attack that utilizes their bases and, and military of Avaltung Britannia as launch pads. On the order of General Feldmarschall Schorno himself, a dedicated corps of troops or soldiers with extra training and landing operations have been established and deployed to the Isles. The Sea Corps, as it has been dubbed by the General Staff, would normally not be terribly effective given its relatively small size. However, this unit is not intended to carry out the war single handedly. The main mission that will be presented to these brave warriors is this establish a foothold in the Normandy and Calais regions before advancing into the two columns. We want to secure the coastal ports and the other advance inland. Eventually, these columns will make contact with the rest of our forces and we'll have a massive pocket of the Burgundian forces ready to be liquidated. Immediately to deploy a corps of our best marines to a military Bavaltung of Britannia in preparation for a major naval invasion. Oh. We can only make one more, and that's all we want is one more. An Iron Curtain? Goring's eyes were rimmed with the dark lines of fatigue and sa sad and sunken. Corner's eyes surveyed the office within the fear bunker where he had moved to following his internal announcement, commencing War Plan C. There was an empty wine bottle there at the side of the desk, vintage old enough that Corner was shocked it wasn't in the cellars of Karen Hall. Uh, that wasn't something you were supposed to just drink for the pity's sake. What was going on with the Fuhrer? His old friend had gone clean years ago, and yet something had shaken that. Corner showed it, afraid of what the answer was. But back to the matter at hand. He'd been called here to talk f to about fortifications, and so on and so forth. So, uh, fortifications he would focus his thoughts on. He'll clearly rescan the proposal he'd been brusquely handed as, as he'd come in. That was quite a bit of resources the Fuhrer wanted shifted, and in such a short amount of time. Kona looked at his old comrade in the eyes. Simon, what exactly are these for? I thought this plan was to push into Burgundy, no? Goring grimaced like a man de in deep pain. For a moment, he remained utterly silent, and Kona felt the hair on the back of his neck stand on end. Then, with the Fuhrer to look around him to see as if to check the two men were truly alone, the Fuhrer bent in. His voice low and quiet, he began to speak. Raymer's been heading up the invasion, and you know he has even less interest in in my commands and Shona is. In fact, he doesn't even seem interested in sign listening to the field marshal anymore either. Serves him right, but I can't guarantee what will happen when the fighting begins. These forts will be our insurance policy, our backup and our defense if the army completely falls apart. And you understand now? Kona nodded soberly. I do, Hunnan. That's only just with the question of where to establish this line. Concentrate on the Siegfried line only. Extend all the way to the Atlantic coast. It's meant to be darn, make it reach to the Metal Mail. Yeah. That's not good. Mountaineers in the Alps. The last piece place the Burgundians would expect us to come through would be the Alps. Throughout history, the crossing of mountains and warfare has been considered to carry far more risk than a reward, while it's a fair statement and neglect to account for the determination of the German spirit. It will shame all the Germany to be forced to say it cannot complete a task that a general of a far lesser race, or lesser race was able to accomplish centuries ago. Uh, the Gebirgsjäger and Alpini divisions stand ready and, quite frankly, eager to attempt this colossal challenge. Entire divisions will be passing through and over multiple mountains on a timetable of, of only a few days. No simple thing, but if it can be done, we shall do it. See Kyle. Alert, Militev of Alton Occitanian. Uh, uh, Militev of Alton Occitanian is one of our new administrations, and we should be therefore take the effort to stabilize them before dragging them into the next battle. 
uh, General Heisinger, as well as whoever plans have been tasked with efficiently balancing his regime's internal security needs, with supplying our invasion force his fair share. With such a significant land border of the Burgundy, we cannot be certain that the SS will not attempt to counterattack and give in the fragile nature of such a young government. Such an even event could prove disastrous. Forces drawn from the rear echelons of our army stationed in the more distant Rakhish Commissars will take their positions, along with Occitanian Burgundian border as well. We wish to leave as little chance as possible. Our invasion must be all but sure when we take the leap. Nice, the last piece for now. It's going to take a while before we actually do invade them, so. Rid of the people. Rally them. Infantry and Avern. While we commit the mechanized and armored divisions of our army in the north of Burgundy to quickly race for Nord Paris, we'll also be deploying our slower but more numerous infantry divisions in the south. The plan is for this tidal wave of land troops to sweep away any Burgundian resistance like a broom sweeping up dust, pushing the momentum so that any SS forces that survive our spear in the north will be swallowed by this devastating tide. This force will naturally be slower than its counterpart, but it hardly needs an extra equipment when the terrain will be incredibly easy to navigate in the center of the French lands. France has seen the devastation that mass infantry and artillery could cause decades ago when we aim to replicate that feat against these traitors. From the south, the Reich's finest will sweep the SS dogs away like so many flies. Early artillery goes to the military of Avalton Occitani, huh? Nice. You know what? I'm actually going to add one more doctor here, too. I guess five more dockyards. So be it. Dockyards are nice. Alert the Dutch Reichsgau. The integrated Reichsgau that were once under the administration of Reichskommissar at Niederlande and the Dutch nation before that will have to be quietly alerted to the coming invasion that they'll soon be a key part of. For the plan to work, they'll be responsible for helping to facilitate the transportation of thousands of men, tanks, and other vehicles. They must be prepared to receive the hair as if it were long expected guests. Roads must be repaired, civilians and border regions must be evacuated qui quietly, and supply depots must be established. We showed a great kindness to our Dutch kin by, allowing direct by directly allowing them to enter the Reich proper. It is time that they repay the favor. We will raise Kampfgruppe Kurtz in the Dutch Reichsgauder Spearheader Assault, Panzers in Calais. For a spear thrust to work, there must be a sufficiently deadly spear tip. To follow the analogy, if our mechanized and armored forces will be the spear thrust of the upcoming Burgundian invasion, we we'll need to establish a vanguard force to strike quickly and decisively to open up a line of advance. After the normal bickering about who would have the honor of leading the charge against the traitor state, General Feldmarschall Schona, likely tired of the arguments, proposed a solution that was agreeable to all. An ad hoc Kampfgruppe of course size would be derived from the units of several other formations that, and would use its less formal structure to better make split decisions in the field. This proposal was generally well taken well taken well, and Shona drew up the orders for the creation of Kampfgruppe uh, Kurtz right then and there. Our armored and mechanized divisions will race to the Netherlands and into Belgium and into northern France. Beautiful. Wait, why is it taking so long to research this? It says 1975 on there, doesn't it? Um, is it because I initially researched it when it was back then that day? I don't know, whatever. You buy devils. And then eventually kick down the door. The orders may at first glance appear to be a formidable foe to defeat. Going, going by military power alone, this thought may hold some weight, but it must always be remembered that defeating the enemy military is all but one part of defeating a foe. The enemy nation itself must be destroyed before true victory can be achieved. So while we absolutely have to do our damnedest against the SS legions, uh, our generals predict that destroying Burgundy as our state will probably far easier. The madness that permeates its very soul makes it incredibly fragile to outside pressure, and it's only survived this long due to the fear of other nations. We need only to break down the door, and the whole rotten structure will come crashing on down. And then eventually it's their turn to the dark. We'll definitely do this one. Ancient the upgrade times will last do that for that one. Information overload. I don't want to do that one just in case. Um, because it's quite significant that they can detect us right now, which sucks. And then it's just like old times. Ah, and scene 40. Those he he heady days when it felt like as if Germany would be able to conquer the whole world in a matter of a few years. Well, of course, we, reality did not prove to be so kind as that, but it must be admitted that even by the most fierce enemies of the Reich that Germany was, in this period, peerless in battle. That we should once again find ourselves fighting a fierce war movement in France is enough to make any devoted Aryan a sufficient age nostalgic. And Fear Goring is no exception. The only difference is that this time around he's not chief of the Luftwaffe, but the Fear himself. And the enemy's not the French, but a slew of traitorous dogs. Well, what is there to be done by waiting? You sound the horn, we'll march into battle in France once more. We knew very quickly we hope to avoid a nuclear exchange. What is this? Flatten Nord Paris. 
As I stated, Nord Ordenstadt Bergen is incredibly hierarchical to the point where Himmler's existence is certainly the only thing keeping it all together, of course. We can exploit this uh, that in deliver one fell stroke to sever the, sever the head of the snake before the war becomes bogged down. We will launch a massive fleet of bombers on a scale not seen since the Blitz to uh, totally and fully wipe the SS's lair from the map. With Himmler buried under the rubble, the, the chain of command will disintegrate quickly and we can take the peace is at our leisure. This will also have the benefit of preventing nuclear strike from occurring as Himmler is likely the only figure in Burgundy with the authority to fire the order that nukes fired. We'll bomb Himmler's lair into rubble until there's nothing left. Well, that'd be pretty good to do. Couple lines of communications. Monstrance lessons. An important lesson in life is always to choose the simplest approach out of any number of possible methods when going about something. Adhering to this principle, the Führer has ordered Raymer to dig out the official campaign records of the 1940 invasion of France and to distribute the core operational techniques to all field commanders immediately. It was in that campaign after when geniuses of the skill Erk von Manstein and Heinz Guderen proved with amazing success the power of interbranch coordination. Just as with our first go around, we shall have uh, perfect cooperation between the land, air, and, uh, and to a lesser extent naval branches so that Paul Schwartz is finished with a minimum of hassle. But I think I'm going to end it there and the next episode we'll take out Burgundy, hopefully not cause nuclear war and start hopefully not seeing too many more glitches in the game. And which will hopefully do okay. But if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.